just need a moment to talk to to self because we've been struggling and we trying to overcome these struggles we trying to overcome the stagnation that we went in we're trying to kill the procrastination we're trying to kill everything eradicate everything that's been holding us back this spiritual journey has been so hard trying to heal my trauma my childhood trauma trying to just just heal from shit that i've been trying to block out and it don't make it no better when you live in a household well, there's nothing but negativity and toxicness, and it's not like <sighs> okay. All right, I had to get that little cry out. You know, sometimes you gotta get your little ugly cry out. But let me bring myself back together. So bring yourself back together, okay? So okay. we good. Are we good? We good. You sure? Yeah, we good. This is probably the most vulnerable. that you know what I don't even want to finish that sentence because I don't want to say that I was going to say this is probably going to be the most vulnerable time I will be on camera but no it's nice to be vulnerable it's nice to be transparent because a lot of people get on YouTube a lot of people they share the cute and the pretty shit but I'm here I'm, I'm really, I'm, I can't even look at the, I ain't even looked at the camera because I really just got to really like, I got to really just think about what I'm saying so I can get it out right. But, I'm here to eradicate all that pretty cute shit. I'm like, with, I'm with RJ, I'm with RJ on that shit. I'm with Divine I'm Insight on that. Like, I, y'all, mm, let me calm myself back down. <laughs> I had to get on this camera to really just reflect on self. Like, I've been doing a lot of self-reflections, and I am so grateful for one. I'm so grateful for how far I've came. Um, my eyes is puffy. My lips is dry. I'm sorry, but... We we, we we keeping a real deal still today. I am going to throw some lip gloss on now. But we keeping a real deal how we feel in here today. Like, I ain't even going to cap with y'all. I'm just struggling. I've been really trying to do this spiritual journey video for the longest. And I'm like, ooh, yes. Yeah, like, when I first got on my spiritual journey, I was like, oh, yes, I'm, like, really going to do a video about this stuff. I'm going to talk to my girls about this because my girls need to hear this stuff. Like, we need we need to be aware of what's going on around us. I'm sorry, y'all. I look a mess, but it's okay. Don't worry about how I look. Just worry about what I got to say. This. I got something to say. Basically, let me get it out. Can we get it out? Can you get it out? Yeah, we're going to get it out. All right. Okay. Let's get it out. Anyway, basically, it's like, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I started this spiritual journey this year, and I'm grateful. That's where I was at. I'm grateful. Whew. I'm very, very grateful <laughs> because... I've learned so much, and dang, I really should turn my car light off because I'd be mad as a bitch if my car died. But we just going, should I start it? But I really don't got no gas, though. I really don't want to start the car, but I'm going to have to start the car. Oh, the, the, the holy struggle. It's the struggle. Turn that light off for a minute, but anyway, I had to turn the light off for a minute, but you can still see me a little bit, y'all. Okay, so let me stop shenanigans. Okay, <laughs> okay, so this spiritual journey.
I don't even know if I'm I'm gonna cut out all these pauses or if I'm gonna leave them in here. If I'm gonna edit this video or if I'm gonna just do it raw and okay. Sometimes I be watching YouTube videos and I'm gonna just be transparent with y'all and I'll be like, it's too organized. It's it's you know how how you explain it? I hope y'all get what I'm saying. Like I hope my real avid YouTube watchers know what I'm saying. Because I've been an avid YouTube watcher for like eight years now. When YouTube first started, I was like, yes, I'm going to be a YouTuber. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. And then it's like, bow, bow, bow. you know, life hit me. Self-sabotage hit me. Procrastination hit me. Kids hit me. Toxic masculinity hit me. <laughs> all that shit just, just done hit me. But, you know, through it all, though. Through all them punches and all them kicks to the gut and and all them drags, like every time I always got a hit back in and I always done got back up. So I'm I'm really grateful and I, I'm proud of myself. I'm grateful for my te- my spiritual team that I really don't even know yet, but I know that I'm gonna get to know and I have a long way to go. But let's talk about the beginning because we're we in the beginning right now. So this beginning is so beautiful. Okay, so it, it it's it's bittersweet. Okay, so like y'all. Okay, I'm gonna just start out step by step the transitions that I went through. And y'all gonna go on this journey with me because I got so much more to go. Okay, so first, it started with I. Okay, let's do a little background. My religious background is I was I grew up in a Baptist church till I was like in high school. Then after high school, I started studying with Jehovah's Witness. Beautiful, beautiful experience with Jehovah's Witnesses. And I would say it was about six to seven years studying with them, but I never got like like real into it. Like I wasn't a Jehovah's Witness, but I was always in that. You know, they have that you in that transitional period where you got you got to go through a lot to become a witness. Like you got to be devoted, devoted. So I was like the the full devotion was. Anyway, neither, neither here nor there, started studying with Jehovah's Witnesses and did that six, seven years. And it was very fulfilling. It got me to a better place in my life. And I think if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have got to my spiritual journey. Like, maybe so. I don't know how life works. I don't know. My ancestors have been working with me this whole time. They've been guiding me and pushing me. So maybe so. I don't know. But it, I feel like, it, I, in my opinion, it did push me closer to my my real spiritual journey because I feel like being religious and being spiritual is totally different things and Jehovah's Witnesses that's totally like just like it, it taps in a little bit in spirituality but that's really just main religiousness but neither here nor there like did that then this year on my birthday I was on YouTube, not even looking up nothing spiritual, not even, like, I think, shout out to my YouTube recommendations, too, like, because I really feel like it got recommended to me because my YouTube name is a goddess, free, so, neither here nor there, a video got recommended to me, and it was from a page called Divine Insight, and it was this guy talking about spirituality basically and after i heard him talking about it i was like you know it's kind of hit home and he kept preaching while he was talking about it he was like you know don't listen to what i'm saying go research it like you know put y'all gay and i'm i was like you know not a lot of people say that a lot of people just say what they say and they want you to believe what they say not a lot of people be having them the the source what's it called when you make a book report and you gotta put the site source not a lot of people do neither here nor there he tells you to research it and i did and i have gained so much wisdom like 
And I have gained so much clarity on what we call life now. And I think I'm so grateful for this journey because it's really taken me out of my fear-based mentality and I just got to be honest with myself like I've been living my whole life in fear and we all got to be honest with ourselves no matter how big and bad you are a lot of these people I was about to say MFs a lot of these people still living in fear like and when I say living in fear it's like do you know what death is and if you don't know what death is you probably fear it (laughs) <laughs> and it's like just that's just the number one thing I could really say and it's like I mean there's more points like a lot of people fear to do what they really want to do because other people's opinions or because of their parents opinions and you know we all tend to live in fear sometimes and with this spiritual journey it really taught me that I can't live in fear. Like, my ancestors, they didn't didn't fight to get us this far for us to to be living in fear. Like, we need to be rising. I almost got mad because whenever I speak of my ancestors, it's like that fire come in me like... If you ever watch Divine Insight or RJ or, you know, I hate to not, you know, if you ever watch Rashad Jamal on, on Instagram or YouTube or on his website, the University of Cosmic Intelligence, Cosmic Intelligence. <laughs> I don't know what I just said, y'all, but whatever. University of Cosmic Intelligence, like, y'all. Yo, like, I don't like, I don't like having to repeat. I don't want to come on here and talk about what somebody else is preaching. But I do for sure feel like his message needs to be more heard. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that, I mean, not a lot. Okay, there's a couple of women that I've seen talking about his delivery of his message and honestly if I could just put my opinion out there his delivery is just real like like it's like if you're not real you probably just don't understand it like that's the only way I can really put it like if you don't under if you're not really listening then you're not going to understand like you have to really your soul and your third eye have to be in tune if you gonna listen because it's not how he's saying it but what it's what he actually saying and it's like i really do just go look up rashad Jamal. i'm gonna get off of that i'm gonna go back to what i was talking about anyway where was i at i i got on i got on to this video on youtube Rashad Jamal and he made me research and I've researched a lot like I've researched a lot like I've researched to put out things that maybe you should research one especially if you are I was about to say black but it's not even about skin tone if you in this matrix like we all together like we all like we all connected so it's really not even about this so anyway like this girl boy child y'all I gotta get better at this but listen I'm just trying to be real and authentic and sometimes a structured organized talk is just not it so I'm trying to stay on topic, and maybe that's why I structure organized talks. Like, maybe that's why some people have structured organized talks. Yeah, I'm just talking to myself right now because I really just needed to come outside and talk to myself. Honestly, I really did. And I've been on this, on this thing, like, I need to be productive. Like, what I want to do with my life. I'm getting older. I have 
kids and I want so much more than what I have. So if I want more than what I have now, what do I have to do to get more than what I have? So I was like, hmm. And that's what ties into my spiritual journey. Like, being religious, it don't teach you how to be, quote unquote, successful. And when I say successful, I don't mean just financially. I mean mentally, spiritually. Like, there's a lot of Christians that still kill themselves. Like, there's a lot of Christians that still are very, very, very hypocrites. Like, like... I just feel like it don't teach you what's really, really important. Like, a lot of people be focused on things that really ain't that important. Like, the most important thing right now, I feel like, especially for us, for us right now, is to enjoy this experience. Because we are here only for an experience like we're timeless beings so if y'all listening to me enjoy your experience get what you want do what you want just don't be out here hurt nobody but like get what you want do what you want like if you got goals you got dreams you got aspirations work for it it ain't just gonna come to you like people be like i pray for this i pray for this but did you work for it because it ain't just going to come to you. You got to work for it. And that's what this spiritual journey really has taught me. And a lot of people sometimes learn that too, you know. But, like, this spiritual journey has really taught me that you really have to be in alignment with what you want. You really have to be on that frequency, like, because everything runs on a frequency. And I have learned that I've been in stagnation for at least eight years now. And it's really, really sad. And that's probably why I was crying when I first came over here because I was just so overwhelmed with emotions. And I was, that's what made me start recording because I was just so overwhelmed with emotions. And I was like, you know, how do I say this? I take pauses because I be thinking, like, how I'm going to say what I'm going to say next. I live in a situation that is not ideal, but I feel like I can change, not change it, I can evolve it, transform it. It's going to take time. And I'm over here thinking like, damn, I already done spent eight years trying to evolve and transform this situation and I ain't getting nowhere, so why did I get nowhere? And then I sit here with myself. And I've been like, and I, I've been gaining all this wisdom on these different podcasts and audio books and books I've actually been reading. And I've been gaining all this wisdom on different aspects of life and communication and chakras. And I've just been learning all these different commu- things. And it's like, I'm overwhelmed because I'm like, I've been working on this certain thing for eight years trying to do this certain thing trying to perfect this certain thing or this certain aspect like my relationship and my career i'll just say that i've been trying like to really perfect my relationship trying to perfect my career and what i want to do and it's like for eight years i've been like "Mm, why am i not getting nowhere like what am i doing wrong like i feel like i'm working hard i feel like i'm being positive i feel like i'm doing what i'm supposed to do but i ain't getting nowhere it's because I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But am I really doing what I'm supposed to do? Like, do I really have a daily routine that is that is in alignment that will have me doing habits that will elevate me and involve me? Or is my daily routine doing things that don't get me nowhere? I hope I made sense saying that. But, like, I really had to look at myself and be like, okay, why I ain't getting nowhere? Because are you being consistent? Are you being persistent? Are you being loving? Are you being intentional? Are you being peaceful? Are you being mindful? Are you being compassionate? And it's like, for a long time, I've been judgmental. I've been harsh. I've Not just to my relationship or my situation. 
or my career, but to myself. Like, I've been beating on myself, just just staying in stagnation and depression and misery and really just not elevating out of my suffering because all I've known my whole life is suffering. All I've known my the whole childhood was suffering. So when I became a young adult, that's what I was used to. So that's what I never fought to get out of. And because now I know that I've made myself suffer and the people around me suffer, and not intentionally, but I have. And now that I realize that, damn, I've been making myself suffer. I've been stagnant all this time. I'm thinking I'm working hard, but really, I'm just... It's not that I don't want to sound that I'm not working. It's just that I'm not tunnel vision working. I'm not persistent. I'm not consistent. I'm not... I'm not in the right vibration while I'm working. I'll say more so. Like, you gotta... Yeah, it's okay to be working hard, but you also gotta be in that right vibration. Right, that the right vibration and that right frequency to to reap what you sow. Mm-mm. I'm trying to get my words out right, but yeah, this is just really just me being vulnerable. I'm sorry, I had to turn my back on. This is me being vulnerable because this spiritual journey, like, it's it's tough like it's tough but it's so beautiful it's like a rose with thorns like you pick it you pick it up you might prick your finger but just looking at at the beauty of it you can't even be mad wow was that even a good analogy i don't know (laughs) if that was even a good analogy but i hope y'all get what i'm saying because like i'm really trying to get out of my suffering get out of my struggling and i need help i need help and i'm honestly calling to myself for help and myself said okay girl i got you you asking for help i got you i'm gonna help you so once i called on to self and was like self why you <laughs> there ain't nobody else i could call on to like mama did daddy what are you like I ain't seen you since mom and dad, but that's, that's neither, neither here nor there. All the aunties and uncles have, I grew up with when I was growing up, non-existent because I was adopted. Then I turned 19, and I found my real family, and it's like, I'm so grateful for Crystal Dickerson and Chantel Malenzi, but nobody else want to fuck with me like it, like... <laughs> Nobody really want to fuck with me. And maybe that's just my perception. And maybe that's because I need to change my thoughts and change my actions. And maybe just work harder to really, you know, connect. But if I, eh, I don't know. I just don't feel, I don't feel, uh, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Uh, because our words and our thoughts are so strong. If it's negative or if it's something that you, if it's something that you don't really desire to happen, just let it go. Don't speak it. Try not to even think it. If Especially if you don't desire that to happen. Because that is what I realized was my problem. Like I've been spending all this time thinking about all this shit that I don't want. Instead of thinking about the things that I want. <sighs> y'all. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to have to show y'all for real what I Let me just breathe. Today was a good day until I went to Little Caesars. <sighs> and I'm not even about to try to explain this now because my heart beating and I might have an anxiety attack if I try to explain it.
You owe me $7. Come on, Sarah. He's going to steal and shoot you. We have a black policeman in here. You owe me $7. You okay. And because you only care about your motherfucking self, this is what this nigga did to my shit, bruh. This is what this nigga did to my shit, bruh. But because only you, 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 want, you want fucking cheese and shit, that's what this nigga did to my shit, bruh. So I'm telling you, bruh. You, you, you can't. You, I need you get. I need you work. That shit, bro. Only, 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 only the only piece of all that motherfucking tray right there look good is the one that you asked for, bro. Real shit, bro. That shit got me high. Lucky for you, nothing keeps you connected like AT&T 5G. 5G, huh? Is that fast? Oh, yeah. It's fast. Yeah. 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 Y
<sighs> we ain't got no food. Food stamps got cut off. A nigga call his brother be like, hey, bro, we ain't got no food. Can I borrow some food with stamps? Nah, but I bring you some food. Okay, cool. A nigga bring over some ravioli and <laughs> some Y'all, I'm trying to make light of a bad situation. So, yeah. Where was I at? You was at a nigga then. No, you know, that's not where you was at. You was at a nigga brother. Where was I at? Oh, yeah. So, a nigga brother bring over some food for the kids, basically. Some food for the kids. Yeah. So, a nigga still hungry. A nigga like, alright. I'm gonna go a little Caesars and get a little five dollar pizza. Cool. I drive a nigga to the store. Go get the five dollar pizza. I'm in there. Then pay for the pizza. Waiting on the pizza. Why is a cashier a black man? Why is the other two workers in the store a black man? Just black men. Regular working black men. <sighs> the first pizza I asked for, I said. <sighs> the crazy thing is, I don't, I eat pizza. But if I have the choice to order my pizza, I'm going to order my pizza with no sauce. Okay? I will eat a pizza with sauce. But if I order my... Besides the point. I ordered a pizza for us to share. Half sauce, half light sauce. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? And then I told him I did it. And then I told him I did it. I shouldn't even have told him I did it. That's what's so <clears throat> So, order the pizza, go to the car, sit in the car, go back in there, go away in the pizza. He said, hey, I'm sorry. Um, I made your pizza wrong. I made it uh, cheese instead of pepperoni. I'm going to remake it. And you can still have this cheese pizza. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Normal cashier customer conversation goes on. As y'all see, or if you don't see, if you don't know, I am trying to grow my YouTube. I am trying to grow and being an entrepreneur. I am trying to grow in my music. So, 